Welcome back everybody to our next week of Good News Club. I have a new song to show you this week. And it says, you are a wonderful God. What does the word wonderful make you think of? It makes me think of God. You are a wonderful God. You made the mountains and you made the sea. You made the songbirds that fly over me. God is the creator and he loves you so very much. He made the songbirds. Every day I hear birds that sing. God made them. You are a wonderful God. You made the nighttime and you made the days. You made my tongue to keep singing this phrase. Yes, God made you. You and I are his most special creation. You are a wonderful God. You made all men and they've broken your laws. You sent your son to redeem us because, you see, you and I have a problem called sin. In the Bible, it says that your iniquities, that means your sin, has separated you between God. Oh, that's a terrible thing. And sin is anything you think, say, or do, or do not do, that displeases God and makes him sad. Because of that sin, we're punished. But God sent his son, Jesus, to die for your sin. Why did God do that? Because he loves you and because he is a wonderful God. Cause us to tell your son's story and then look to the sky for his coming again. You see, after Jesus died and gave his blood and he took your punishment for your sin, they buried him. But Jesus wasn't buried for too long because he rose again. He is in heaven today. He is alive. He is not dead anymore. And now we are looking forward because someday he is coming back to this earth. You and I have to be ready for when Jesus comes back. And in the meantime, before he comes back, what should we do? We should tell your son, that's Jesus, tell Jesus' story. And then look to the sky for his coming again. Jesus is going to come again. We don't know when, but he will, and he promised he will, and he never breaks his promise. We've learned about that before. I'm going to sing this song for you. You are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. You made the mountains and you made the sea. You made the songbirds that fly over me. You are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. You made the nighttime and you made the days. You made my tongue to keep singing this phrase. You are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. You made all men and they broken your laws. You sent your son to redeem us because you are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. Cause us to tell your son's story and then Look to the sky for his coming again. You are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. Yes, God is wonderful. There's one word I forgot to mention, and that's this word, redeem. Redeem means to buy you back. You see, when you're in punishment for your sin, God doesn't want you to be always having that punishment for sin. He wants to take you out from having that punishment. He wants to get you back. He wants to get you into his family. God can redeem you because of what Jesus did when he died on the cross. Let's go ahead and jump into our time today.
Jesus is the good good. Jesus. Oz, we are here. We are here. Oh, hello. Oz, you didn't realize we were here. Oh no, I didn't realize I was here. But hello, hello everyone. We are back here. I'm here with Oz, and for today we have our memory verse. We were still singing the song that just just playing before, right? But we are here now, and for today's memory verse. But I have a question for you, Ozzy. Do you believe what God says is true? Yes, I believe what God says is true. All in his Bible, I believe is true. Well, Ozzy, I'm going to be reading you a memory verse from God's word. And you will tell me how much of it do you believe is true. Okay, you could go ahead, Wilfredo. I will have to leave. Bye. Our memory verse is found in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. So go get your Bible wherever you got it, get it. So we could read together our memory verse for today. You could go ahead and stop the video and look for Isaiah 12 2. Now that you have it, let's read it together. Isaiah 12 2. God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my son. Isaiah 12 2. Now, what I've read it here is God's word from the Bible. So, do you think what I read from the Bible is true? We will get to know that, right? So, I have Isaiah, the, the memory verse over here. So, let's read it together. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my son. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. So, God is my salvation. God is my salvation. If you have received the Lord Jesus as your Savior, God is your salvation. You have received your salvation by asking God for, for forgiveness of your sins for all the bad things you have did before and now your life has changed. I will trust and not be afraid. You can depend on God and be bold in every situation so you are not afraid. You could go through different situations for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my son. So, Lord Jehovah is another name for God that reminds us how strong and mighty, and mighty sorry, he is. God can be out your strength and his my strength when we are weak and give you and me songs to sing in every situation. Rather, you are sad. He's always going to make you happy and Remember that the, if you feel lonely, remember that there is someone there always beside you that you can see and touch. But he's always there with you to make you happy, right? So if you if you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, God is your salvation, right? Always remember that, that if you have accepted He, you have His salvation. The next time you feel afraid, you can trust God to help you be bold. If you don't, and so you can be afraid, you could ask God to give you strength to be bold so you cannot be afraid. If you have not received the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you can you can trust God for salvation. You could ask God for salvation, tell God to forgive your sins, all the bad things you did, right? You could ask Him, you could bend your knees in your bed when you're going to sleep and you're going to ask Him for salvation too move away areas of the bad stuff you have did right so listen carefully and be attentive to the bible lesson because afterwards you will have the chance to review to receive and review jesus as your savior right so we'd like to say one the memory verse one more time isaiah 12 chapter 12 verse 2 god is my salvation i will trust and not be afraid for the lord jehovah is my strength and my son for our review game, for our memory verse, we're going to be playing add an action. So it's simply easy and it's very enjoyable, has a lot of fun. So it goes like this, I'm going to pick a, okay, it will be based on the letters, the words begin, like for example, I would say G. So when we, would, when we go to, when we are saying the memory verse, sorry, we're going to clap for God because it begins with a G. And if we have another word in the verse with G, we would clap too. 
but here we only have one G so that means we're gonna be clapping only for G right so I'm going to be picking the word Isaiah and Isaiah starts with an I and there are more letters I mean more words that starts with an I so you have to be attentive to clap for the word right so let's begin Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2 God is my salvation I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my son Isaiah 12 2 so now that we have added an action for I now we're gonna be the next word will be S so for S for all the words that are here that begins with the letter S we're gonna snap our fingers so we have S for salvation we have S for strength and S for sound. So you have to be attentive because now we're going to do both of them, which is I and S. At the count of three. One, two, three. Isaiah 12, 2. God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my son. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. Hope you clap and snap for all of them. <laughs> okay, so... Hope you enjoyed, I enjoyed, and I'm going to see you on the next Memory Verse. Stop and let me tell you. Tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. Go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. He'll forgive their sins, he will save their souls. To cleanse their hearts, he will make them whole. Go and tell the story of the Christ of Calvary. Go and tell the story. to this week's story of Maruku. As you can remember last week, we talked about how Maruku was going to bed and then he prayed and he accepted Jesus into his heart and he was so excited that he couldn't go sleep. So the next morning, Maruku got up, he went to Mr. Della's Hill's office and he saw this talking book. So he went up and he looked at the beautiful colors and the first color was gold and he tried to recite the memory verse and for the gold memory verse it's John 3 16 for God so loved the world and for the dark page that he turned to it's Romans 3 23 for all have sinned so after he recited those he heard a voice behind him and he quickly turned around and he saw Mr. Della Hill standing there. And Mr. Della Hill said, Maduku, I have great news for you. So Maduku said, What is the great news, sir? And Mr. Della Hill said, Your foot, it's all better and it's healed. So you can go home. So Maduku was sad when, when Mr. Della Hill told him that. He said he didn't want to go home and he wanted to learn more about this talking book and God. So Mr. Della Hill, he had a smile on his face and he said, Don't worry, Maruku, you can carry the talking book with you and share to everyone in your village about God and the great stories about the talking book. So Maruku was very, very happy. So the next morning, Maduku got up, he was ready and everything, he got up and he headed home and he was so happy that he could jump, run and skip. So he was so close to home and 
his mother turned around and his dad turned around and they saw him. So they ran up to him and they said, Oh, Maduko, it's great to see you. We missed you. And the brothers, they saw what Maduku had in his hand and they were like, what is that in Maduku's hand and where did he get it? So Maduku, Maduku told them it's from, the book was from a missionary's place and the missionary's name was Mr. Delahale. He gave the book to Maduku and it was the talking book. So they were so excited that they said, what does it do? So Maduku said, I will tell you the great stuff um, tomorrow. So next week, you have to come back and you have to hear what Maduku told his brothers. Priscilla had to be bold for God. You see, my friend Priscilla, this actually happened to me. My friend Priscilla, she came out from the shop and she just bought something. But when she was looking at the money that was given to her as change, she realized, they gave me extra. I'm not supposed to get all this. What did Priscilla do? Well, I was able to help her to be bold for God. You know what that means? That means that she went back to the shop and she told the person at the cashier, she told them, you gave me this extra money. And she was honest. Hmm. Sometimes it's hard to be bold for God. Sometimes it's hard to be courageous and to stand up for what's right. Even when others might laugh at you or others might make jokes about you or they might tease you or call you different names or not be your friend anymore. That can be very hard. But today in our Bible lesson, we're going to find out about a man who had to be bold for God. Well, we know that last time we looked at the children of Israel and how Deborah was the judge at that time and how Deborah went with this man named Barak and they went and they fought against the armies and they won. God gave the victory. And after they get the victory, the land got rest. For 40 years, there was peace. But once again, mm, here it goes. The same thing happened. The Israelites again worshipped idols, false gods. Uh, when are they ever going to learn? Well, the Bible says here, that the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian seven years. That means these people called the Midianites are coming against Israel and oppressing them 
and treating them badly and hurting them, stealing from them, taking things from them, like their crops, their animals, their houses, their land. Oh, horrible. For seven years, the people of Israel were hurt by the Midianites. Well, Israel, the people of Israel, they hid in fear because every time the Midianites came, see them here? Here they are coming. Here they are. They had many, many camels. Here they are coming. And every time the Midianites came, the Israelites would go and run. They would hide in fear of these Midianites. The people of Israel would hide in places like caves or if there was a, some type of large rock, maybe there was a hole in the rock and they could hide in there. But they hid from the Midianites because they were very scared of these people. And for seven years, whenever the Israelites would grow their, their farming crops, and when it was time for harvest, the Midianites, they would come and they would take everything. They would even take the animals. They would even take their land, their houses, all the crops, everything. They would take it all. Listen to what the Bible says. Whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites would come against them. They would camp against them and devour, that means take or steal, the produce of the land. They would take it all. They would eat it all as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance in Israel and no sheep or ox or donkeys. So they took all their crops and they took all their animals. Wow. For seven years, this went on. And what happened? Well, the people of Israel, let's see what it says. They cried out for help to the Lord. The people of Israel were crying out to God saying, God, help us. Help us, God. The Midianites are being mean to us. They, they take the things that we work so hard for. Well, God, he heard their prayer. God loves them. They're bad. They're, they're bad when they when they're not loyal to God. But yet you see how God continues to love them. Wow, that is amazing. Well, God sent the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord went to go talk to a man named Gideon. Now, Gideon, you see what he's doing here. He's a farmer. Now, you see what he's doing? He's doing a thing called threshing wheat. When farmers grow wheat, they have to do a process called threshing. And this is when they throw the wheat up into the air and then the air blows the bad part that they don't use. The wind blows it away and the good part falls down because it's heavy. Usually the farmers thresh their wheat on top of a hill, but Gideon and many other people like him were afraid of the Midianites. And so you see what Gideon's doing? This little like hole in the ground, that's called a wine press. He's not doing it on top of a hill. He's trying to do it in hiding because he's afraid of the Midianites. But you see that shadow? The angel of the Lord came to Gideon and told him a special message. Oh my, what did the angel of the Lord say? Well, the angel of the Lord, he said that God wants to use Gideon. God wants to use Gideon to get rid of the Midianites and the problem that Israel was having. Wow. Well, Gideon, he asked for a sign because he wanted to make absolutely sure that God was, that this was real, that God was really meaning what he said here. Well, Gideon said, wait for me. And I'm going to prepare some, some food and some drink and I'll bring it back, but wait for me until I come back. And so the angel of the Lord stayed and waited for Gideon. Gideon went, he prepared the food. He had some goat meat. He had some bread that didn't have any yeast. And he brought back the food. And the angel of the Lord said to put the food on a rock. And Gideon did just that. And when he put it on the rock, the angel of the Lord took his staff, you see that there, his rod, his staff, and he touched the rock. And as soon as he touched the rock, a fire came up and it burned all the food. And as soon as that happened, the angel of the Lord disappeared. Whoa. 
Wouldn't that be amazing to see? The angel of the Lord disappeared and Gideon, he knew that, that, that was, okay, yes, yes, it's real, it's true. It's, whoa, that's what God wants me to do. Well, God, he told Gideon, don't be afraid. Gideon, he believed. He believed and he built an altar. He worshiped God there. Well, the Lord told Gideon he had to do something, something that was a little bit different, something that took some courage to do. You see, Gideon's family did not worship the one true God. They worshiped a false God called Baal. And they had an altar right behind or right near their house that was built to worship this false God called Baal. But God told Gideon, go tear down that altar. And when you tear it down, build one for me. Build one for the one true God for me. And make a sacrifice and worship me. Well, Gideon, he was thinking, this is going to be a big job to go and tear down this altar. You see, that's what he was thinking. That's what God was telling him to do. Go tear down the altar that your father has built to Baal. Well, Gideon, he decided to do this at night because it was a bit, the people in the village there, they worship Baal. But God, he wanted Gideon to build this altar to him. You see, Gideon had to come to God, God's way. God had the way for Gideon to worship him. Hmm. Sometimes it's the same thing with you and me. You see, our sin causes us to be separated from God. And that sin is a terrible thing because it gives you a punishment. And we're born with that problem of sin. But Jesus died for your sin and my sin. Listen to what the Bible says here. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Yes, Jesus died, he was buried, but he rose again on the third day and now he's alive today in heaven. And you have to come to God through his way, which is believing in Jesus. The Bible says in Jeremiah 31, 3, it says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. God loves you so much, but he only has one way for you to come to him. And that is by believing in his son, Jesus, and what Jesus did for you when he died on the cross. Gideon had one way to worship God. And that was the way God told him. So that night, Gideon, tore down the altar that his dad built to Baal. Oh my goodness, look at them tearing down that altar. Whoa, Gideon here, even though it's nighttime, he did it because he was afraid if other people saw him during the day, so he did it at night. But he was learning to be bold for God. If you have believed in Jesus, you can learn to be bold for God as well. It's not always easy to be bold for God. If your friends look at you and see that you go to church or see that you pray, maybe pray before you eat your meal, they might look at you, they might laugh at you, they might make jokes about you, maybe they question you or gossip about you. But you have to remember, be bold for God. He will help you and don't be ashamed of God. A very bold Christian in the Bible he wrote this verse. I'd like to read it for you. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. What does the gospel mean? It means the good news about Jesus. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. You see, this man who wrote it, his name was Paul. He said, I'm not ashamed of God. You don't be ashamed of God either. When it's hard to stand up for God and do what's right, remember, God wants you to be bold for him. Well, Gideon here, he was being bold for God. He tore down that altar. He built an altar to the one true God. He put a sacrifice there. He worshiped God just as God instructed him to do. 
And then the next morning, the men of the village, they looked around and they saw that altar to Baal was torn down and they were wondering who did that? And they found out it was Gideon. Hmm. They were not happy. They went to Gideon's house where his family lived and they talked to Gideon's father. Gideon's father was named Joash. And so they talked to Joash and they said, bring Gideon out. We know he tore down that altar. But Joash here, remember, he's the guy who built the altar to Baal. But listen to what he says. He tells the men, if, 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 don't talk to Gideon. Instead, let Baal come and defend himself. Whoa, Baal was a false god. Baal's not real. Baal is not alive. He cannot hear or answer your prayers. He cannot defend himself. But Joash said, let Baal defend himself if he's a true god. Whoa. Well, it seemed like Joash had a change of heart there. And Gideon, he was not killed by the men of the village. Whew, he must have been so thankful. But God, he wanted Gideon to trust him. You see, God said, Gideon, I'm going to use you to fight against the Midianites and get you out of this problem. And so Gideon wanted to make absolutely sure. So he asked God to do something, to show him a sign. And Gideon had a piece of wool. And wool is the sheep, the fluffy stuff on the sheep. <laughs> and he had a piece of wool and he put it on the ground and he asked God, God, if you really want me to fight against the Midianites, tomorrow morning when I wake up, let the wool be wet. Wool, it was also called fleece. Let it be wet and let the ground around it be dry. Gideon woke up the next morning and that's exactly what he found. The fleece was wet, the ground was dry. And then Gideon said, one more time, God, but this time, let the fleece be dry and the ground around it be wet. The next morning, Gideon woke up and the same thing happened that he just asked God to do. The fleece was dry and the ground was wet. Wow, God was helping Gideon learn to be bold for him. If you have believed in Jesus, you can be bold for God. It's not always easy to be bold for God, but you can be, you can be bold for God. Remember what it says in our memory verse for today, Isaiah 12, 2. God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. Isaiah 12, 2. Yes, you can be bold for God. It's not always easy to be bold for God, especially when others might laugh at you or or make fun of you, call you weird names or hurtful names, or perhaps they gossip or make jokes about you, or all of a sudden they're not your friend anymore. It's hard to be bold for God. But remember, when you have to be bold for God, remember, the Lord is my helper. That's a verse found in Hebrews. And you can remember this one too. Jesus will never leave me. Those are two verses that you have that will help you to remember, be bold for God, even when it's hard. When everyone else is making fun of someone, you choose not to. When everyone else is, being, is telling lies, you choose to tell the truth. Be bold for God. Gideon was learning that message and that, that truth in his own heart. He was learning to be bold for God, even when it was hard to trust God, even when it was hard to believe or hard to obey God, he still obeyed God. He was learning to be bold for God. And God gave Gideon the confidence he needed to be bold for God. Wow. Well, Gideon, now he's ready. He's ready to go into battle with the Midianites. And he was ready because he believed that God could use him. He knows God really wants me to do this. He asked God to do three different signs, but now he knows this is something God wants him to do. For sure, he knows that. Well, God can help you to be bold for him. 
If you have believed in Jesus, remember, God wants you to be bold for him. The Lord is my helper. Hebrews 13, 6. Jesus will never leave me. Hebrews 13, 5. Yes, you have those two promises. And that can help you to remember to be bold for God. But you can't be bold for God until you have accepted him and received him as your savior. And the Bible says in John 1, 12, it says, right here in the Bible. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So if you have not received Jesus or taken Jesus for yourself and as your own savior, you can do that today. You can choose to believe in Jesus, that he died, that he came alive for you, and you can ask him to make you part of his forever family. If you want me to help you with that, you can always look in the description of the video and get in touch with me. I'd love to help you. But if you want to do it on your own, you can tell Jesus something like this. Dear Jesus, please make me part of your family. I have sinned and I am sorry. I believe you died and came alive. In Jesus' name, amen. If you tell Jesus something like that, you truly mean it. He will make you part of his forever family. Let's close off our time today in a word of prayer, and then we'll be done. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone who's watching. I pray that you will help us to remember to always be bold for you, even when it's hard. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you next week then. Thanks for watching. Bye.